welcome to the second topic where we are going to be discussing uh, transport. Uh, this is a major topic because it is the one that helps us to uh, be able to facilitate um, logistics and movement of goods from one point to another. So we are simply saying that uh, transport is the physical movement of people and goods from one place to another and it is because of transport now that we are able to reduce or the bridge the gap between the producers and the consumers. Uh, then we look at the importance of transport. Like we have said on the definition, the first one is that it helps to bridge the gap between producers and consumers. Uh, the other one, it helps in the creation of employment. So through transport, we are able to employ drivers, we are able to employ pilots, we are able to employ mechanics and other uh, road constructors. Uh, improving people's standards of living it enables consumers to get a variety of goods and services yeah so these employers that we these drivers employees that we employ through transport they are able to make their lives better uh, through the jobs and whatever they earn from that particular employment then we're also saying that it promotes specialization transport enables people to specialize in jobs they are best art for example producers uh, would concentrate in production only while other people carry out uh, the distribution part uh, the other one is that uh, it enables in making goods and services more useful so through transport goods are moved from a place where they are least required or where they are not uh, very much needed to where they are most required thereby making them more important and more useful uh, transport also helps in availing a wide market for products so through transport uh, we are we are able to open up uh, more markets for our goods and uh, services and also it helps in increasing production facilities uh, facilities mass production uh, due to wider market created through transport producers are able to increase the volume of goods produced this is also a continuation. Uh, it helps in promoting development of industries. Uh, the other one is that it leads to the opening of new markets. And the other one is that uh, it avoids, helps in avoiding wastages. Transport makes it possible for surplus goods to be disposed of by taking them to areas where they are required. So we do not, we end up not wasting a lot of uh, raw materials goods because the transport is uh, available now then we look at the essential elements of, of uh, transport we have four of them units of carriage methods of propulsion ways and and terminals when you talk about uh, units of carriage we are saying that it refers to anything eh? all forms of vessels that are used to transport goods and people from one place to another uh, examples of uh, what you are calling units of carriage is uh, ships, trains, aeroplanes, motor vehicles, bicycles, carts, and so on and so forth. Then we look at the methods of uh, propulsion. What exactly this means is that uh, those units of carriage require a source of energy to, to push them or to propel them to move. So that's where we when we talk about methods of propulsion we are referring to petroleum products e.g. petrol diesel uh, electricity currently we are having electric cars uh, human force or animal power then we have waste it refers to either the route uh, or path by where the vessel passes eh? the route can be on land on water or through air examples are roads railways so those are what we refer now to to the routes or the ways the paths the canals the seaways and so on and so forth and then we have the terminals uh, of course the where we have these units of carriage now they they have to stop at a particular destination so those are the terminuses the bus stations the airports the seaports the ports and so on and so forth then we look at um, various modes of transport. Uh, for these ones, you need to understand the benefits and uh, disadvantages of each. So we have road transport, railway transport, water transport, air transport, uh, pipeline transport. 
so road transport uh, of course uh, the mode of we use here is by road uh, so what are some of the advantages of using uh, road transport it's flexible uh, it also helps to facilitate the movement of goods in remote areas so even the far much far flung areas in the remote we can be able to access uh, those areas through road transport then it uh, provides alternatives in the form of cars rickshaws autos car, cars buses trucks and and so on and finally it is very suitable for uh, short distances so when you are doing road transport we can also uh, use uh, cover be able to cover short short distances uh, disadvantages of uh, road transport it is not suitable for long distances as it is not economical of course now the cost of fuel has uh, really gone up so the longer the distance you are covering the more it becomes uh, quite expensive to uh, use the road transport slow as compared to railway uh -huh. goods can be destroyed or damaged due to dust or pollutions that's okay and then it also takes a lot of time uh, especially for long distances you can imagine maybe a distance from nairobi to mombasa would be around 10 hours by road or or more so it really requires a lot of time to use this mode of transport to deliver goods uh, to the customer the other one is uh, it is prone to accidents and breakdowns uh, those ones are common phenomena uh, in the road transport and of course they hinder uh, the goods reaching the, the consumer then we have the railways transport uh, of course now we use rail some of the benefits include that uh, it's economical for long distances like now in kenya we have the standard gauge railway it has cut the distance from nairobi to mombasa by six hours so now people are able to do four hours uh, so it is a, a better way compared to road transport then this means of transport is very faster than road nowadays uh -huh, that's that's correct and then more suitable for carrying a bulky amount of goods and, and products so it can be able to carry huge amount of goods that is what you mean by that point when you talk about bulky it provides proper protection for from exposure to sun and dust uh, pollutions it is the very safest so it is also a safe mode of transport and finally rail transport helps to provide employment for both skilled and and unskilled individuals uh, disadvantages of rail transport huge capital required for construction and maintenance uh -huh. so it's it's quite costly the, the kenyan uh, sgr costed the government close to 360 billion it was quite expensive it is not suitable for hilly areas it is not flexible in nature because of course it has uh, scheduled timings eh? and then it, it consists much time for booking of goods through the comparison of roads uh, road transport uh, the other one is uh, water transport it in, involves the movement of goods through oceans and seas some of the benefits include goods in bulk yes we can transport goods in bulk it promotes foreign or international trade so goods are able to move from countries uh, far away to get to uh, other countries through the sea uh, it can easily carry a huge quantity of goods such as timber and coal and the other one in comparison to water transport the risk capacity is is very slow uh, what are some of the disadvantages there is a, a delay in movement of goods from one place to another uh, the other one is performance is affected by seasonal variations uh, the other one is it can be used in a limited area of operation because it can only run on seas and oceans so you can only use it on seas and oceans water transport is very unsuitable for small businesses because it carries a huge number of goods uh, so air transport you can uh, review those advantages uh, fastest means of transport so you can read on that and the disadvantages 
Then we also have what we call a pipeline transport. So this one is uh, basically for transporting of liquids and gases. Uh, advantages is that they are flexible in transporting liquids and gases. We have mentioned that. It needs a limited area of maintenance. Pipelines are very safe and accident free. Yeah, so very few accidents can be reported compared, of course, to roads uh, and other modes of transport. Can transport liquids in large volumes. Okay, that's okay. Uh, it is limited uh, as a disadvantage, limited to transportation of gases, liquids, and fluids. So it cannot transport any other item. It is difficult to detect any leakages. Uh, difficult to make security arrangements from this uh, transport. Uh, then we look at factors that influence the choice of appropriate means of transport. Uh, what factors guide organizations as, as they choose the most favorable mode of transport? So one of them is cost. Uh -huh. how, much, how much is it costing the organization in terms of uh, hiring of the vehicle, in terms of fueling? The other one is the nature of goods. Uh, if the goods are perishable, if they are if they are bulky, the choice of the mode of transport will definitely differ depending on the nature of good. Reliability. So how reliable is the, is the mode of transport? Uh, is it available when you need it? Those are the questions that we answer around reliability. Uh, the other one is urgency for goods that are urgently required. The fastest means available should be, should be chosen. The other one is safety and security. Uh, for example, when we are doing road, we are prone to carjacking, we are prone to theft, we are prone to terrorist activities where IEDs are set underground and when the car steps on it, then it bursts. So those are safety and security concerns. Then in uh, distance, what distance will the mode of transport be able to cover? Uh, the other one is availability. The other one is uh, availability, uh, the mode of transport. And the other one is uh, flexibility. This is the ability of the means of transport uh, to be manipulated to suit the convenience of the transporter. So sometimes you want to change the timings. So is it possible to be able to change that? Then we look at a number of documents that are used to facilitate transportation. We have airway bail. This is a consignment not used for the carriage of goods, air, or they are used for carriage of goods that are transported by, by plane. Then you have bill of lading. This is a receipt for goods shipped on board. A vessel uh, they signed by the person who contracts to carry them and stating the conditions in which the goods are delivered. So once the goods are lading, they land with a document we call the bill of, of lading. And then we have the packing list, a document that sets out the details of the packing of the goods. Documents are required customs authorities to enable them to make spot checks of or more data checks. So this kind of documents will show what is in the package. Some packages are uh, very tightly sealed. So they are going to assist in the customs to identify whatever is in those goods. Then we have the bill of lading, a declaration, an importer or exporter of the exact nature, precise quantity and value of goods that are landed or are being shipped out. So this one uh, discusses the, in terms of nature uh, and the quantity and uh, what is the cost of those goods. That one is discussed on the on the bill of entry. Then we have a consignment note. We are saying is a document prepared by a consigner. A consigner is also what we would call a supplier and countersigned the carrier as a proof of receipt of the consignment for delivery at the destination. This document evidences the receipt of goods and attributes which shows the truthfulness of the actual delivery. So in terms of goods being delivered, we can also use the the consignment uh, note. Finally, we have the goods received note and uh, the advice note as part of the documents. 
so you can uh, read more. Transport is a really wide area. You can read more on the documents, more on the methods, advantages and disadvantages. Thank you so much.